So I'll take the job. And you have to go to work right now. I said, I'm ready. <laughs> so I went to work digging ditches. <laughs> I was working with real husky guys, and I was weighing about 120 pounds. <laughs> and my job was the wheelbarrows. They, they would load up and deliberately, they would load off the wheelbarrow pretty high. <laughs> First time I lifted a wheelbarrow, that thing tipped over. It took me with it. I couldn't. When you load a wheel, it's a one wheel, and you got to hold on to it. I, I toppled the whole thing. And they were kind of laughing at me and said, Look now, you get in the ditch, you do the digging. The second week I was in the ditch digging. One day I just raised my head to get, to get a breath of fresh air. I see a man walking down, <laughs> little walk to him, and I kept him looking. To, I said, oh, I recognize him. And Dr. Carruthers said, oh, I immediately got busy <laughs> digging away. I was embarrassed to be caught <laughs> in the ditch. <laughs> and somehow he must have spotted me too, uh, somebody looking at him. He stopped. He said, you, Joe, uh, uh, he couldn't get my last name. Yeah, I'm Joe Lobowski. What are you doing here? <laughs> That's the remark you made. I said, well, that's the only job I could get. And he walked away. <clears throat> the next morning, <clears throat> the yard former comes over to me and says, Joe, come with me. I said, oh my God, there's a, I won't even be two weeks for me. <laughs> I thought he saw me goofing off or whatever he did. I was very suspicious and very insecure. And he takes me. <laughs> To Dr. Carruthers' office, like, oh, what a relief. Dr. Carruthers said, Joe, have a seat. Very briefly, very curtly, he said, Joe, um, how would you like to work for me again? And so, something like that. Oh, I said, I would be delighted. Because it was getting cold in November, windy. And I said, boy, I'm going to be working in, indoors. Then he told me I'll be doing. Uh, Work for a different research chemists. My first assignment was Dr. Kaufman, D.D. Kaufman. And that's the way I got with DuPont. <laughs> when 6 6 was made, about 10 grams by Dr. Uh, Jerry, Gerald Bershay, having all the properties and just about they were looking for. And uh, the raw ingredients was, they call it cold air and water, uh, any product. Uh, petroleum or coal or anything. And then they immediately try to scale up from 10 grams they want to make an ounce of it. And that's when I believe they told the story. When they made an ounce of it, the same procedure, the same ingredients, when a sample came to me for evaluation, I evaluated it and I found it, it does nothing. It's not the 6-6 six, six that I first tested. And I reported that it didn't have the melting point. <laughs> it didn't have the tenacity. And my report was uh, was a kind of shock even to, uh, to Kaufman. Wait a minute, Joe. He started reviewing my procedure. Everything was routine. And they, they was a great mystery. Dr. Carruthers, Berche, <laughs> Kaufman. Uh, Peterson, and uh, uh, that was a big shock. Uh, I can just, I, I feel the shock even now. They can't make it anymore. And that's when Dr. Carruthers need more, they had all hands on deck, finding out what happened. Why Brainstorming. Yeah, they were just finding out what happened. And they needed more help. And they had another chemist, PhD, Dr. Spanigal, Edgar Spanigal. So Dr. Spanigal tells me that, how, I said, how did you get to the nylon? At that time, I didn't even know him. Carruthers asked him, he said, look, now they're having problems getting the, 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 the problem. They need another some help, find out, just help them out, to find out what's wrong. And Spanigal came into, the laboratory, and he saw the operators cooking and the vapor coming off the operators. 
he took a, some litmus paper and just touched the fumes coming off. It was basic. So immediately, to get a 6-6, six, six, the diamine and the acid had to be exactly one, one more on weight, precisely. When they combined, they had the molecule complete. What, what he had discovered, when you were making 10 grams, you can get the temperature up very quickly and the reaction starts, you got the polymer. As they started going into higher quantities, it took more time to get the temperature up. In the meantime, they were losing diamine. When the reaction started, there was a lack of diamine. So he goes to Carruthers and says, look, I know the, what the problem is. He says, we're losing diamine. Can you get the temperature up? Uh, Gay explained it. There's low quantities. Temperature comes up with, in the, whatever diamine is lost is not enough to break the molecular weight. So uh, the most amazing thing, all the time, all the research was always making the polymer get the water off. The water would hydrolyze it. They, they go to molecular steel on a high vacuum to get the water or don't let the water stay with the polymer. That was a big mistake. Then, of course, when finally they got the polymer uh, in, the, in the pounds, it went from, from uh, grams to ounces to pounds, and from two pounds, the autoclave had to be enlarged to 50 pounds, and I have some pictures. From 50, it went to 250, went to 500, they went to two, the autoclave, 2,000 pounds.